Today, we're finally taking a look at the Steam Controller by Valve. Welcome to a Came From A Box. My name is Sergio A.M. <laughs> So by pre-ordering the Steam Controller, I actually got it one month before the official release date. Now that, to me, meant let's put the review up on that same month, but of course, they kept updating the software, which is a good thing, and all those cons all of a sudden were irrelevant. But now, I'm in a way better place to actually tell you what I think about this and give you a little bit of insight as to what's changed and what's been happening within the last few months. The goal for this device was to emulate a keyboard and mouse. So that alone should give you an idea of what you can expect with this. So, here we go. This review will actually be split up into three parts, and you can access that here on the annotations or in the description below. In part one, we'll focus on the hardware, the actual controller. In part two, we'll talk about how the controller works with the software. And finally, in part three, we will test it out on a number of different games so you can see how it actually works. All right, and there it is. Um, I mean, I really like this packaging. The The box here almost looks like a shoe box, if that makes any sense. And uh, it's in this dark navy. And then they have this brighter blue. As a designer, I'm really loving that. The controller right here on the front, this slides right off. Some languages here. We have a sort of diagram with um, what it, what's inside the box. I like that. Play all your Steam games from your couch. Actually, you know what? There's this really cool sort of explosiveness in there. Let me open this up real quick. Oh, that is extremely awesome. Inside right here, we have a, an explosion, the explosion of the controller itself. I mean, you know, it's all the x-ray version of it uh, laid out, so it looks really cool. There's a lot that goes on in there. All right, so let's go inside, and I do have my trusty knife for this part right here. Uh, does it need more? No, actually, it's a straight-up lift. There we go. All right, so let's see. Controller's nicely presented in this kind of... What is this material? I don't know. And there it is. So finally, it took years to have this in my hands, and I'm extremely excited to test this out. So we have the two double A's, and they're not cheaping out on the double A's. We have Duracells with us right here. And then we have the USB connector right there and I think that's about it inside I'm sure we're gonna find some paperwork as always there it is quick start guide and then we have a steam controller product guide I'm not gonna really look into those some nice little imagery in there all right so then we do have our USB is it an extender or a cable there's a cable in here so let me see what it is so, there it is. Um, I'm not 100% sure what this is. Okay, yeah, that is an extender. So inside, what you would do is connect the micro USB to that. And then, what you would do is grab the, I can't find it. There it is. USB connector. And this would help you extend the range. So, that's a neat thing to have. So let's go over what you get in the box really quick. First off, the Steam Controller, a USB wireless pairing dongle, a USB to micro USB cable, which you can use with the controller if you want to use it wired, or with the included USB port with the dongle to extend the reach to help with the signal. And it also comes with two AA batteries. As for dimensions, the Steam Controller has a length of 6.25 inches with a width of 4.25 inches and a depth of just under 2 inches. Now as for weight, although it looks big and heavy, with batteries it weighs in under a pound at .63, so it's actually pretty light. And because they're one of the biggest features, the track pads have a diameter of 1.5 inches, so plenty of room for your thumbs. The Steam Controller has an odd look to it. I mean, it's it's very unique, but not as pretty as I wish it was. It's still based on the original overall shape that we saw way back when they first announced it. And to me personally, it sort of screams version 1.0. The whole thing is made of plastic. 
as you can hear right there. And for the most part, it's matte, except for this glossy part which wraps around the front here. Not the biggest fan of that material because it's extremely prone to fingerprints, and it's also a bit slippery, but um, not in a way that'll make you lose your grip on it. So it is different than other controllers, of course, and um, I think it's because it's a bit more organic in shape and larger, as you can tell, it just looks larger. But I was able to quickly adjust to it from the previous one I had. In hand, it feels very natural, and that is because of these crazy big handles. Their size and curvature makes it very comfortable to hold, and they allow your hands to rest in a way which gives your thumbs and fingers the ability to easily access everything without overextending. Now we're gonna take a quick look at the layout, and then we'll talk about the details. So overall, the layout shares some similarities to what we're already used to seeing with controllers, but with a few exceptions. And I will say that this is way better than the first version um, because they had the screen in the middle and they had the X, Y, A, and B buttons all over the place, which would have completely screwed with our muscle memory. So very happy to see that. On the left and right, we have our nicely sized track pads that look like eyes. And then on the bottom left, we have our analog stick. To the right of that are buttons, and then you'll notice they're actually a little close together and almost to the point where my thumbs touch, but I really didn't get that problem, so not that big of a deal, I suppose. Then in the middle we have the steam button. The steam button actually lights up as well when it's turned on, but it's the only thing on this controller that has lighting. And then to the left and right we have select and start. On the top here, you have your micro USB port in case you want to play wired, and on the sides you have your left and right triggers and buttons. So let's flip this around, and in the back, we also have a cool little addition of paddles. That's right. Since we're back here, let's talk about the battery slots. Down here you have a switch, and it ejects the back panel here. You see? The panel also serves as your paddle buttons. And it uses a very thin looking piece of plastic. Reason for that is that it needs to bend in order for you to press down on the inputs behind the ejection diagram here. So that's actually where your buttons are, back here. You can hear them being pressed right there. Ergonomics aside, the reason these handles are so big is because they hold the battery slots as you can see right here and right there. The Steam controller runs on two double A's, which I'm glad they included. And on the product page it states that they can last up to 80 hours with standard gameplay usage. I personally wish they had rechargeable batteries, but they had to change that to keep to that $50 price point. Nonetheless, uh, it's not that big of a deal because you can always use rechargeable double A's, which I have, but for some reason I don't use. I should probably consider that. Now the way the batteries go in is quite interesting. Uh, you see that diagram right there? You just push the battery in from the bottom, then the top, and it locks into place. Then you're good to go. Now if you need to take them out, you just follow the diagram again with this little ejection button right here by pushing it up with your thumb, and it pops right out. Now let's take a closer look at the buttons. Your X, Y, A, and B buttons in the front here are made of glossy plastic and they feel okay. There's really nothing special about them. They're not bad, but they're not great. Nonetheless, they're reliable and responsive buttons, at least from what I've tested so far. I really wish they had more of a tactile feel to them to give you that assurance that yes, you just press that button, and um, it wouldn't hurt if they were a bit bigger. But listen, you can listen to the buttons here, just so you can see how hollow that sounds. On the other hand, the analog stick is awesome. Very responsive, always jumps back to its middle spot instantly every time, and it's covered in nice and very grippy rubber. You'll also notice around the edge of the top here, it's lined with tiny little dots all around, which makes it extremely difficult to lose your grip on. And interestingly enough, the analog stick also has haptic feedback. Very cool little feature there. Up here we have our right and left triggers and buttons. Not much to say about the buttons. They work well and they're very responsive. They have a nice and loud click to them. A little loud, if you can hear that, of course. But the triggers are awesome. They're very ergonomic. As you can see, your finger wraps around them very easily. They're a great size and they do have tactile feedback. So when you push all the way down, you get a nice reassuring click. 
There are also dual stage triggers which allows you to customize the actions even further, such as lightly pushing down on them shoots your gun, and pushing down on them until they click lets you reload, so you can get very creative with these. Now on the back here we have the paddles, and they're very handy for situations when you don't want to move your fingers off the analog stick and track pads, but I did notice that my hand got a bit worn out if I used them too much. So not counting the actual variations of each one, that's actually 16 forms of input. Now onto the most unique feature of the Steam Controller, the trackpads. As I mentioned, one of the points of this controller is to emulate a mouse, and with these, you have the flexibility to have multiple types of input, such as trackball, analog stick, scroll, or racing wheel. And more importantly, with the software, you have an insane amount of customization. S seriously, it's probably a little too much, but I really, really do love it. As for materials, they seem to be made of the same matte plastic around the rest of the controller, and since your thumbs will be moving around these a lot, the smooth texture really helps because there's not much resistance or friction to it. While the right trackpad is smooth, the left trackpad actually has an extruded D-pad to help remind your thumb where it's at like with traditional controller layouts, which is a nice touch, but I do wish they had something like that for the one on the right. Both are also really well spaced out, and holding the controller while using them feels really good and natural. Utilizing haptics helps a lot with these, and I'll be talking more about that in a little bit. Uh, it's much easier to be precise and accurate because you get a sense of how fast you're moving due to the vibrations. Now the closest thing I can compare these to is a laptop's touchpad. Yes, you can play a first-person shooter with it, or an RTS and MOBA, but you won't really get the same type of control and precision as you would with a mouse. That's something you hear a lot for a reason. Same rules apply here, except you can customize these a lot to help with those shortcomings, such as with sensitivity. Same as a laptop's trackpad, you can also click these. In the end, I feel like competitive games where quick action is required doesn't really work with these trackpads, but you can get really close to emulating a mouse, and in most cases, it may actually be better than an analog stick. One of the least talked about features of the Steam Controller is the gyro and accelerometer. Seriously, a lot of reviews out there did not even mention this, which is a little shocking to me personally because it's such a huge feature. So if you're wondering what you could possibly do with this, think of anything the Wii or PlayStation Move has done, but then you can add customization into the mix. Very, very detailed customization. So all of a sudden, first-person shooters are much easier and intuitive to handle. Driving games become a bit more immersive, and surprisingly enough, with fighting games, you can emulate a physical motion of a combo to execute it, so it's almost the same motions from using a fight stick. The community is finding out more and more uses for this feature, so I'm really curious to see what they do with all the games out there, and I can't wait to show you guys what I've learned about it. The haptic feedback on the trackpads and thumbstick is very awesome, and it really adds a lot to the experience. You can of course customize the intensity to what you like best from low, medium, and high, but you can also adjust other things such as swipe duration, sensitivity, and more. The best way for me to describe the haptic feedback is that it feels like a tiny, turning, clicking switch or lever right under your fingers. Those motors also produce sound that varies depending on the intensity, so when you're using the touchpads, the motors sound like um, a Geiger counter, and some mistake it for buzzing or static noise, and they think it's a problem, but it's not. That's only what happens when it's set to low. But anyways, so you guys can hear it. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, a lot of people don't know that that sound is actually from the haptic motors, and there's been a few reports online by some thinking it was broken or malfunctioning, but that's not the case. This is working exactly as intended, so if you guys are worried about that, please don't be. The haptic force actuators, and that's the actual term for these, can function as speakers and play audio waveforms as well. How awesome is that? For example, in the personalized settings, you can set a specific sound to each controller so you can identify it when it turns on and off. Those are all created by the motor in there. So how would you use haptics and what are they good for? 
Well, think of a situation in an FPS. When you're sniping and you're zoomed in, you need to be very precise in that situation. So utilizing haptics, you can feel every movement with tactile feedback underneath your thumb, which helps you assist your aim when you're going fast, you're going slow, etc. And with the sounds, you can even hear a bit of feedback as to how fast you're moving. So fast and slow. Although I'm pretty sure you won't be able to hear it while playing a game. After months of using it, I've grown to really love the feature. So much so that when I use another controller, I end up missing it a lot. It's almost like haptics brings it to life or something. And for those of you wondering, don't worry. If this annoys you, if you hate haptics, you can always just turn it off. So that covers the hardware, the controller itself. Now we're gonna move on to the software and how it actually works with the controller because it gets a little detailed and I really wanna make sure I share all that information with you guys. So I'll see you guys in the next video. So thank you so much for watching. If you like the video or have any questions, make sure to let us know in the comments below. Now if you wanna support the channel and help us out, feel free to click that thumbs up button and subscribe for more content. Of course, if you wanna follow us and interact with us, you can do so on Twitter, Facebook, and a bunch of other sites, which I'll put down below. Thank you so much. My name is Sergio I.M., and I'll see you guys for the next box. I think that does